Undisputed heavyweight champion means all. Don't mean nothing. No matter what belts they hold, no matter how many wins they've had, they'll never be considered the best of this era until they beat the Gypsy King. Tyson, how are you, my man? You good? I'm doing very, very well. I'm in a very good place here in Las Vegas, enjoying my training, enjoying my food, enjoying my water, enjoying my sleep, enjoying my recovery, and that's it. You talk to me about that, because you just mentioned in Las Vegas. Is this it now? Are you uh, going to get a green card, become an American, move over here? No. I, uh, I have my fights here, yeah. but I'm, I'm still a uh, Morecambe Lancashire lad. And that's it. I don't think I'll ever, ever move. Ever. Um, I've often thought about moving. I've often thought about moving to America. Yeah. I've often thought about moving to Spain. I've often thought about moving to, to France. I've often thought about moving to Manchester or London. But I never seem to go anywhere. I think more comes one of them places that gets your hooks in and you can't leave it. And uh, yeah, I, I seem to be happy there and I've got good memories there. So yeah, I don't want to leave. You, see, you seem really at home here as well. When, whenever I've seen you over the last year or so, obviously fighting Schwartz and Wallen in those, in those build-up fights here in Las Vegas. Vegas seems to be very Tyson Fury, if that makes sense. It does, it does. Las Vegas is a great place to box, yeah. a great place to, to be an athlete, be an entertainer. Um, it's the home of all big sports stars and all big um, entertaining stars around the world. And if you can come to Las Vegas and make it, you can, you can make it anywhere. You seem to be, from a, from a public point of view, you seem to be celebrated a lot more here as well compared to when you became world champion in, in 2015. The Americans seem to really take to the persona of the, the Gypsy King. I'm not so sure, you know, I've got millions and millions of fans in, in the United Kingdom. I got, I got a lot of fans over here as well. Um, you know, at home, I'm almost like a folk hero now. You know, I walk down the street, I get bombarded. People show love and, and I enjoy it, you know. It's, it's, it's a lot better now being the fan favourite as to being the fan villain all the time. And I, I had to pay that, that uh, pantomime villain for a long time to, to sell fights and all that. But when you achieve everything in the game, people respect your achievements. You don't have to talk all the anymore just have to be yourself and I suppose when I release that book this is really Tyson Fury behind the mask there's no more mask anymore I'm just being myself and that's it when did that realization come when, when did you realize that you didn't have to be a pantomime villain anymore you could be yourself you could just be Tyson Fury when I achieved everything I wanted to achieve in boxing I wanted to be the most controversial charismatic colorful champion since Muhammad Ali and I definitely did that for sure but now that's over, I just can be myself and be a normal person and uh, entertain the fans and, and have a good fight and that's it. It's been, like you say, it's been, a, it's been since becoming champion against Klitschko in, in 2015 to where we're at right this moment in time. Five, almost five years this year. I mean, Flew, wasn't it? what a ride. What a, I mean, obviously we would never have been able to predict all the things that have happened over that, that period no, of time, God. good or bad, but a huge growth a time of growth for you, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to say the word mature because you, 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 you came across as always a mature guy, but when you, when you hit the top, did, did it live up to the expectation that you dreamt as a kid? When you were dreaming of becoming world champion, did it live up to that expectation? I'll never know. I'll never know because I was very ill when I was uh, boxing for that world title. So I never got to appreciate my achievements at all. I went into the camp unwell. I trained unwell all the way through. I was unwell during the fight and I was unwell after the fight. And I continued to be unwell until I got better uh, in if late 2017. You know, after I had that mental breakdown, I think that was the best thing that could have happened to me in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, on, on, on the other side, getting, getting through a mental breakdown and getting the other side of it, it's, um, it's a great feeling. Great feeling to go, go as low as any man can go and then come back to the top and come out the other side healthy and well and live to tell the story. It's an amazing story and I wouldn't change anything because life's about living experiences and, and I've had a lot of experience in my life, good and bad, highs and lows. And if you don't have these experiences, then I don't think there's much point in, in, being, in being a sportsman, being a fighter, being an entertainer. Life is about experiences. And no matter what the experience is, you should take positives out of everything because that even negative stuff, there can be positive experiences from it.
and life lessons and things you can learn all the time. As a person, even a 90 year old person can never stop learning in life. I spent a bit of time with Connor this week because we're obviously here for Connor's fight week. And he was talking about having mixed martial arts in his life and able to centralize him. You've, you've obviously seen what's happened to him since he became uh, a, a, a double weight world champion and obviously went off to fight in the world of boxing and what have you. And it seemed the fame, the fortune and what have you, and he, him taking his eye off the ball in the world of mixed martial arts kind of then affected the rest of his life. How big of a part of your life is boxing? Not just from a professional point of view, because that's your job and what you do, but in order to affect the rest of your life, that, that, that routine, that discipline, how much does it help? Um, the routine discipline's good. It's, it's a good thing to, to be involved with. Um, I used to think boxing was everything to me. I used to think I couldn't live without boxing, mm -hmm. but it's untrue. Boxing's a sport, boxing's my job, and that's where it ends. My life, I've got a great life outside of boxing now, better, better than I've ever had before. And it's just, just keep grounded and keep living like a normal person. Um, I enjoy the small things like taking the kids to school, picking them up, making some breakfast, going to the tip, doing the bins. <laughs> I enjoy all that. Mate, I, I ate it when my wife asked me to do truth. the bins. <laughs> I, I like going to the gym in the morning at the local leisure centre. Yeah. Um, I like training with normal people, speaking to the last of the summer wine boys at the place. You know, <laughs> you got like, 70, 80 year old men, they of all course. go there every morning. Um, and we have a little bit of crack and it's good, you know, it's, it's good, good just to be, there's a lot to be said for being a normal person. Yeah. You know, people will say, oh, life's about ambition and, and IT flighties and all the flash stuff and all that. I beg to differ. I think life's about living a grounded, normal life and, and being, being happy with that. I don't need to live a superstar's lifestyle to be happy. I don't need to live in Las Vegas or London to be happy. I can be happy in Morecambe, going for a coffee, dropping the kids off at school, doing me bins, taking the car to get it valeted for a £10 valet, having a haircut on a Monday, you know, going to the gym training. That's it, that's my routine life. I don't live any other life. That's the best life you can live, I think, just being a normal person. How long then will boxing at this level be a part of what you're doing? Have you, have you got a plan? Have you got a, a certain amount of fights that you want to do before you can crack on with other ambitions? I have no other ambitions. No, my only ambition in life is to be happy. Um, some days I'm happy, some days I'm not. I think with my um, manic depressive disorder, I think that's going to be a part of my uh, life forever. Ups and downs forever, never be right. But you know, I'm happy. As long as you're above ground and healthy, then I think that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, There's not much more you can be than that. My uncle Billy once told me, the best thing you can ever be is out of trouble. I didn't know what he was on about when he told me that when I was a youngster. I thought, this man's a fool. But growing up and, and understanding and, and enjo enjoying life and understanding how things work, then I think the best thing anybody can ever be is out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Healthy and out of trouble, doesn't get much better than that. Nothing else really matters. If you live in a cardboard box and you haven't got 20 quid in your pocket, if you're happy doing that, then you're a wealthy man. You're a very happy person. I'm happy. Big time boxing's one thing, but you know, all, all careers come to an end. I've got three more fights left on this ESPN contract. So we'll see, see how I go with them, and then we'll see where we go from there. You know, I'm 31, coming to the end of my career. I'm not 22 anymore. I've not got nothing to prove. You know, I've got a few fights left, and you know, hopefully we, uh, we'll be successful in these fights. And, and continue to, to keep moving forward and spreading positivity and, and that's it really. I can't really do much more in my life. I'm really happy with the way things are going. I'm really happy with where I am as a man and as a husband and as a brother. I think I've come a long way. Someone sent me a video um, only a short time ago, like two years ago. I was very fat and overweight and I, you couldn't really understand me because my voice was a bit like this. So I've come a long way since then and I'm, I'm really happy. You know, whatever happens in the wild to fight, I'm happy. Very happy. I've achieved everything I've ever wanted to achieve in my life yeah. and more. Yeah. I've made plenty of money in my career. You know, um, I'm, I don't live an extravagant life, so I've never got to worry about going skint or that sort of stuff. Made good investments. And that's it, really. It's good to see you in this space. It really is. It's good, it's good to see you speaking like this and, and carrying this, this persona from where you were two, three years ago. I mean, it's yeah. great. 
Regarding, regarding the rematch, talk to me about the changes obviously that you've made with trainers and various things like that. And obviously we've seen you last week in LA or early on this week in LA talking that you, you want to stand and bang, you want to dig your toes into the canvas and you want to, uh, you, you want to knock him out. Yeah, listen, it's, it's, it's a new thing. Um, I like new challenges. It gives me something to get my teeth into, it gives me focus, it gives me drive. And when, I, when I'm not that used to doing something, it gives me ambition to get better at it and get better at it. So yeah, we're working on in the gym, on, on putting lots of punches together and coming forward more and landing bigger shots and whatever. And that's it. Yeah. I, uh, I brought Sugar Hill in to, to work on me right hand because I seem, I seem to be moving a lot and throwing a lot of jabs and feints and not throwing enough right hands. So yeah, brought someone in who specialises basically on that, on that right hand. Um, yeah, so we're hoping to throw it in the fight plenty of times. Hopefully it'll stay injury free and I can land it on Wilder. A lot, of, a lot of fans watching this, they know you can outbox him. You outboxed him the first time for a lot of people's opinion. So why not do the same thing again? Why though? Why do the same thing? Did it work last time? For a lot of fans, yeah. Yeah, but fans, for what people think, that's one thing. What I think is one thing. But the official decision is what counts, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. So I think losing or drawing is the same thing. I class that as a loss. Deontay Wilder should do too. So I'm not one of those people who's happy to lose on points or put up a good fight, you know. I lost in a great fight. I don't do that. I'm here to win or nothing. And people say it a lot, but they don't mean it. I'd rather get carried out of that ring on a stretcher, losing, trying to win, than settle to lose on points. And that's what separates me from, from the rest. That's what makes me a different breed, a different animal. People talk a good game. They think what they do when they've got a massive cut on the face. I'd keep fighting, never experienced it. They think what they might do when they're on the floor, spark out on the floor, game back up, and fight on. Never experienced it, so they don't know. Um, my heart says win or nothing. I don't do second place. So if I get carried out of that ring, fair play. Because I'll know I've done my best to knock him out. Do you think, just to finish, in the period of time that you want to fight for the rest of your career, do you think we'll see an undisputed heavyweight champion? Undisputed heavyweight champion means all. Doesn't mean nothing. There's a lot of talk of it, because a lot of promoters talk about it, but what does it really mean, undisputed heavyweight champion? What does it mean? I don't know what it means. What does it mean? Do you well, know what it means? Well, it's supposed to mean the, the main man, isn't it? It's, that's what it's supposed to mean. I'm already the main man. So, you know, there's always going to be ifs, buts or maybes. There's never going to be the main man, ever. There'll never be concrete, he's the main man. Because there'll always be someone else's opinion saying, no, this, that and the other. Undisputed champion, what does that really mean? Not a lot, to be fair, these days. When, when I beat Klitschko, he was considered... The, ma the main man. The main man. Yeah. Was he or was he not? Yeah, absolutely. There was no, there was no if, buts or maybes, was there? No. So when I beat that man, what did I become? The main man. Say no more. So to do it again, it's already been done. I already did that. And I'm the only active heavyweight today that can actually say they have been the main man in the division by beating the top guy. The rest of them ain't. See, when you understand boxing like me, it's, it takes it to a whole other level. Wilder beat a, a fresh champion, the main Stavern, who it was making his first defence of the belt. Not really that good. Joshua beat Charles Martin, a guy who won a title on a default. Probably never even should have been a world champion. A guy that was a world champion because the IBF stripped me with having four days of the belt and give it to somebody else. So that's how he became a world champion. I became a world champion by beating a guy who had 26 title defences and unbeaten in 11 years in his own country, his own backyard. So that means I be I'm the man to beat. And none of these guys of my era can ever be considered, or even looked at as the man until they beat Umwa. And that ain't easy to do. 
as I proved in the past. Not an easy task. So yeah, as far as I see it and as far as it goes, I'm the man in the division to beat. No matter what belts they hold, no matter how many wins they've had, they'll never be considered the best of this era until they beat the Gypsy King or not. Perfect. Perfect way to finish, man. Appreciate it, dude. Thank you.